In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Silver Lace Wyandotte and stay tuned to the end because I will be getting into the egg department on how many eggs they lay and if they're the right breed for your flock. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the creation of the Wyandotte breed came about from the desire to have a chicken breed that was suitable as an all rounder, that is, for both eggs and table fare. Of course, other colors came along later, but the silver laced Wyandotte was the first and arguably the prettiest of the Wyandotte breed. This video will go through the history of the silver laced Wyandotte, its temperament, and of course the egg production and so on. So let's start off with the history. The Wyandotte is one of America's oldest and most well-known and loved breeds. It is unusual because it was the first American chicken created with a dual purpose in mind. Early Americans had many different breeds providing eggs and meat, but no one breed provided both well. They had brought over all chickens from Britain and Europe, so there were several different breeds available, but none had specifically bred to fit the needs of the early settlers and homesteaders. Initially, the bird that would become the Wyandotte was called the American Seabright Chicken or Seabright Cochin or Mooney. These birds, had been mentioned as far back as 1873 and were found over much of the U.S. after the Civil War. However, there is little or no information that I have been able to find about this proto-bird. To add to the confusion, the Seabright, also known in England, is a bantam, not a full-size bird, nor is it in any way related. So let's talk about the creation. Four men, H.M. Doubleday, J. Ray, L. Whitaker, and F. Houdlet, were the innovators of their time. They sought to create a bird that was indeed a utility bird providing both meat and eggs to the average American with minimal cost. They worked separately in Michigan and upstate New York to try and perfect the Mooney bird. There was a rose comb and single comb varieties in the early specimens, but when the breed was admitted to the standard of perfection in 1883, the rose comb was the desired standard. Although the exact origins of the silver laced Wyandotte are unknown, genetic material from the dark Brahmas and silver spangled Hamburgs are likely contributors. Also possible contributors to the the genetic pool were Breda and Polish fowl. The name of the bird, the Wyandotte, was an acknowledgement of an Indian tribe, the Wyandotte, who had initially been befriended and helped the settlers in upstate New York and Ontario, Canada. Fred Houdlet suggested it in honor of his father's boat, which had also been named in honor of the tribe the Wyandotte. When poultry farming became industrialized in the mid 20th century, the Wyandotte was cast aside as not productive enough. It did not produce eggs in sufficient quantity, nor did it quickly put on meat enough to be profitable. Over the years, the number of Wyandots declined steeply and it became an endangered breed in its own country, the United States. Silver Lace Wyandotte was listed as a priority breed by the ALBC until 2016 when they removed it because numbers had recovered enough to warrant an upgrade. This is yet another breed threatened by the almost meteoric rise of the industrial hen. Thankfully, thousands of backyard keepers fell in love with this beautiful bird and gave it a second chance. Sadly, its sister bird, the white Wyandotte, has not enjoyed such a resurgence in popularity and remains critically endangered. Now let's talk about the standard and appearance. In total, the American Poultry Association recognized nine varieties of the large fowl and 10 bantam varieties. The silver lace Wyandotte was admitted to the American standard in 1883, the first of the Wyandotte varieties to do so. The many varieties of Wyandotte were admitted as follows. 1883 was silver laced, 1888 gold laced and white, 1893 buff, partridge and black, 1902 silver penciled. 1905, Colombian. 1977, the blue. The birds are somewhat round and fluffy. All the fluffiness keeps the hen warm through the winter months. They are a medium weight bird with the rooster weighing in at eight and a half pounds and a hen at six and a half. The bird has a somewhat curvy shape, but with a short but well arched neck. This leads down into a brief but broad back on a medium length bird. The saddle rises, giving a slightly U-shaped silhouette. The body is broad and deep, well-rounded, almost voluptuous. Eyes are a reddish bay color and deeply set. Legs, toes, beaks, and skin are all yellow. The legs are short and stout, widely placed for the perfect balance. There are four toes to each foot. Comb, waddles, earlobes, and face should all be vibrant red. The bird has a rose comb, which is highly useful in cold, frosty climates. It's much better at tolerating frost and freezing than a more pronounced comb is. Some of the problems associated with these birds have been narrow backs, little chicks, and poor hatches. The two latter problems are both significant contributors to the scarcity of 
of the white Wyandotte. It has been noted that there are significant differences in color tones between the UK and US birds. All right, what you've been waiting for, let's get into the egg laying department. We'll also talk about its temperament and lastly finish off with if it's the right breed for your flock and go through why it would be. Wyandots are of good temperament, although some can have strong personalities making them seem aloof. They are friendly birds, but not cuddly and can be pretty talkative. Although this can vary significantly from bird to bird, they are usually reasonable dominant with other birds. So they are often near or top of the pecking order. Wyandots don't appear to bully other birds, but are assertive and are seldom bullied. As for egg laying, they are reasonable layers, averaging around 200 light to dark brown eggs each year. They make great mothers and are prone to being broody, which many folks find undesirable since they don't want or can't have more chicks. Also, the desire to be broody cuts down on egg production quite significantly. Several people use them to hatch eggs from breeds that aren't good at being moms or broodies. They tolerate confinement well, but are good foragers when allowed to free range. The Wyandot has copious, gorgeous feathers, making it suitable for colder climates like the upper Midwest states, Canada, and Northern New England. It will tolerate warmer weather, but needs to have shade readily available and of course plenty of cool water. The bird is a rose comb bird which is ideal for colder climates as they will not quickly get frostbitten as the comb sits much closer to the skull. Occasionally you will find a Wyandotte with a single comb but these specimens are not recognized by the APA and should not be used for breeding. Average life expectancy seems to range between 6 and 12 years depending on the line of the bird. They are not prone to any unusual chicken ailments since they have thick dense feathering. Lice and mites can be a problem if you don't check on them regularly. Regularly. All that fluffiness at the back end can also lead to some poopy feathers, so the occasional trim might be necessary to keep them tidy and clean. If mating is a problem, you may need to trim the feathers to help facilitate fertilization. So is the Silver Lace Wyandotte right for you? Wyandots do very well in 4-H projects and the show ring, especially in the Midwest states. There are popular show birds in the UK, Europe, and Australia too. Generally, the Wyandotte is a calm and tolerant bird, making for an easily handled and compliant bird. This is very important important in the 4-H arena where the birds are generally raised by youngsters making them an ideal beginner bird. Birds need to have a bomb proof demeanor to further show ring. They must endure being caged all day close to strange birds. They need to be able to handle stress of being picked up, prodded, and judged. Not sure I would have the temperament for all that but Wyandotte seem to take it in their stride. As a backyard hen they are pretty calm and undoubtedly beautiful to look at. As I have mentioned they are also great with children and well suited for a family with children. This breed is is ideal for you if you're looking for a solid yet docile breed that lays nicely. While the Silver Lace Wyandotte is an excellent forager, their aloofness makes them a bit naive and prone to predator attacks. The Wyandotte is often more involved in the grubs and goodies they are foraging for than keeping an eye out for predators like hawks and foxes. The Wyandotte is a decent free range chicken, but it might be wise to keep your hens with a rooster so at least someone is watching out for aerial predators. And while their interesting colorations can and deter predators, it isn't usually enough to protect them from a fully fledged attack. One quick note on bantams, like most breeds, the bantam variety of the Wyandotte is very similar to the standard. Temperaments and climate tolerance are identical. However, it is essential to note that most bantams of any breed tend to be just a tad flightier and less friendly than the standard versions. As always, temperaments vary within the species from bird to bird. If you found this video helpful, also be sure to check out Plymouth Rock Chicken. I have a video here for that. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you found our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.